Hello my dear students. I welcome you all to my channel. Today we are going to learn an English chapter of class 10 from the book First Flight. It's chapter number number 7 Glimpses of India. We have already learned part 1 Baker from Goa in my previous video. Today we are going to learn part 2. The chapter name is Kurg and it's written by Lokesh Abrol. So students if you are watching my video for the first time do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notification of my latest upcoming videos okay students so let's continue with the chapter so let us know about the author lokesh abrol he is a doctor by profession traveler and a social entrepreneur in love with india who sees writes and photographs in a pleasing light He loves India and likes writing about different places he visited in India. So yes students he is a doctor by profession and side by side he loves traveling and he is a social entrepreneur. He loves to explore different parts of India and he writes his thoughts and experiences whatever he sees in his book and that is what we are going to learn today about Kur what he has explored and what he has to say about the place cool so let's proceed cool is a coffee country famous for its rainforest and spices yes student it's a uh, famous for its coffee plantation and you can breathe the smell you can breathe in air the coffee the spices there and it's the rainforest area covering a large uh, percentage of land in the forest and you can see wild creatures and you can you can experience the natural beauty there i hope you will plan your vacation and explore kurg after this chapter <laughs> yes students so let's know more about it midway between mysore and coastal town of mangalore sits the piece of heaven that must have drifted from kingdom of god This land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men, beautiful women and wild creatures. Kurg or Kadagu, the smallest district of Karnataka, is home to evergreen rainforest, spices and coffee plantations. Evergreen rainforests cover 40% of this district. During the monsoons, it pours enough to keep many visitors away. The season of joy commences from September and continues till March. The weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measures. The air breathes invigorating coffee. Coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under the tree canopies in prime corners. Students, this is a this area cool. It's located between Mysore and the coastal town of Mangalore. and it is considered as a piece of heaven which has been drifted which has been dropped down from the kingdom of god and yes if you see the scenic beauty the images you really feel that it's from the kingdom of god it's like a heaven this land of rolling hills is inhabited by proud race of martial men no martial men are nothing but personnel related to the military the arms the uh, the, the people who are in the army or navy so you find the proud race of martial men coming from this area you have beautiful women and wild creatures kurg is also known as kodagu and it is the smallest district of karnataka and it has evergreen rainforest spices and coffee plantation and 30% of the rainforest area is covered the entire district with from this kurg area it's in this kurg area and during the monsoon it pours enough it pours so much that we, many visitors have to keep away we have to stop the visitors from coming to this area during the rainy season monsoon season the season of joy commences from september and continues till march this air this uh, era from september till march is good for exploring for it because the joy and the beauty is uh, is just overall flowing there the weather is perfect with light showers and you can enjoy you can breathe the invigorating coffee smell in uh, in the whole atmosphere and you can see the coffee estates there you can see the colonial bungalows which are just tucked 
under the canopies, three canopies, and this is how this unique beauty of the core or the cordigo is what like. Then, just the independent people of core are possibly of Greek or Arabic descent. As one story goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when their return became impractical. These people married among the locals and their culture is apparent in the martial traditions, marriage and religious strife, which are distinct from Hindu mainstream. The theory of Arab origin draws support from the long black coat with an embroidered waist belt worn by the Kodavus, known as Sufia. It resembles the Kufia worn by the Arabs and the Kurds. So this is the one, one history about the Kurgis people, like how they are belonging to the possibility of belonging to Greek and Arabic descent. So they ha there's a story behind it that when Alexander moved with the, his army to the south and when they were not able to return, returning was impractical for them. They tried to settle over there only in the Kurg region and they married among the local people there. And we can see that culture still existing in the martial traditions, in the marriage, in other religious sites, which is totally different from the Hindu mainstream. It doesn't belong to Hindu religion. So it's a more different and it great facts to the Greek or the Arabic descent. Then one more example from where we can get this Arab descent is the type of cloth they wear. It's a long black coat with an embroidered waist belt and it is worn by Kodavos and it is known as Kupia. So again, this is resembling the dressing habits of the Arabs, which they wear, Kufia and Kur. So this is how the story goes that they are also the descendants. They may be the descendants of the Greek or Arabic. So this is about their traditional cultures. And uh, ahead, moving ahead, Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to the sons and fathers. The Kork regiment is one of the most decorated in the Indian army and the first chief of the Indian army, General Karyapa, was a Kurgi. Even now, Kodavos are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without a license. The river Kaveri obtains its water from the hills and forests of Kork. Mahasir, a large freshwater fish, abounds in those waters. Kingfishers dive for the catch, while squirrels and langurs drop partially eating fruit for the mischief of enjoying the splash and the ripple effect in the clear water. Elephants enjoy being bathed and scrapped in the river by their mahos. So students, about the Kurki people, they have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous whalers. When you count, you see that the history, they are very courageous related to the fathers, forefathers and the sons. And the Kurk regiment in India is also a decorated one. Decorated in the sense the most of the awards and are popular and are famous among the Indian army. And a first chief of Indian army, General Karyapa, was the Kurgi too. Then, even now we find Kodavus are the only people in India that they get the permission to keep the firearms without even a license. We also have famous river Kaveri, which obtains its water from the hills of the Kork and the forests of the Kork. We also have Mahasir, a, a large freshwater fish and abound these waters. And we have kingfishers which dive there to catch their prey. We also see the squirrels and langurs enjoying the beauty by dropping the partially eaten fruit into the water. It is the mischievousness which they do to see the splash of the water and the ripple effect which they can see in the clear water. Even they enjoy the beauty there, they just explore it. We also see elephants enjoying being bathed and scrubbed in the river by their mahouts. Mahouts are the caretakers of the elef elephants who usually train them and who take care of the elephants there. Then, the most laid back individuals become converts to the life, to the life of high energy adventure with river rafting, canoeing, grappling, rock climbing, and mountain biking. Numerous walking trials in this region are a favorite quit trekkers, birds, bees, and butterflies are there to give you company. Macaws, Malabar squirrels, langurs, 
and slender lorries keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy. I do, however, prefer to step aside for wild elephants. The climb to the Brahmagiri Hills brings you into a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of Kuru. A walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64-acre island of Nisargadhama. Nisargadhama. Okay, so we have many adventurous uh, activities there. If you are an adventure lover, you should visit we have rafting, canoeing, raffling, rock climbing, and mountain biking here for the adventurous and sportive people. Wow, it's so superb to see that. And we also have favorite uh, spots for the trekkers there. We have natural beauties, the birds, the bees, and the butterflies will give to your company. We have again macaws, malabar squirrels, langurs who keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy. They sit right at the top of the tree and they keep the view of what is happening and how everything is going on. And I do however prefer to step aside and when the wild elephants come, you have to be aside because you should not disturb them because it may become they may become wild at the time. The climb to Brahmagiri Hills brings you a panoramic view. When you are at the top of the Brahm Brahmagiri Hills, you can have a full panoramic view of the entire landscape of the forest. And wow, it is so beautiful. Then a walk across the rope brings you to a 64-acre island of Nisargadhama. You can see the 64-acre island of Nisargadhama. If you just go across the rope and you can move there, you can reach there. And running into Buddhist monks from India's largest Tibetan settlement at nearby Pailakup is a bonus. The monks in red, orchids, and yellow robes are among the many surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for heart and soul of India right here in Kori. So we also find the Buddhist monks here who are in largest uh, in number in nearby Pailakup area and it is a bonus added one to see them in the different colors of the robe and in the dresses and the attire and it adds on to the surprising and the discover discoveries which a visitor does there and it also adds to the beauty of the core and uh, the visitors who search it touches the heart and soul of india right here in the core after seeing so many traditions cultures beauty, animals, flora and fauna and what not. So I hope you like this work and you will be planning uh, for your further vacation there to go and enjoy and explore school. So this is what about work we have to learn today. So I hope you all liked my video. Thanks for watching it.